No, it was modern. Modern. Something new in the world. And especially after the war and the war years and all those losses and destruction, it was like the birth of a new society. Well, I grew up in Brooklyn, and uh, my parents were first-generation European. My father was an artist who made his living as a commercial artist, which is what it was called then. He was extremely skilled at drawing and marvelous at watercolors, and he learned airbrush. My mother said he was the best airbrush man in New York. When I took classes at the Art Students League, my father would take me to uh, the young people's concerts on, at Carnegie Hall on Saturday mornings with my sister, who was uh, younger, and then we would go to the Met, or we would go to um, another museum. My father loved the, the Frick. And so, you know, we would look at certain things, and of course I looked at the mummies, but it was just, it was a Saturday thing. And later, uh, after I went to Bard, I went to the Institute of Design. I was doing things that had to do with theater and music. And I made some things um, that were like little stage sets. And uh, I don't remember if it was Hansel and Gretel or the Bluebird or both and all of that. And there was something about pictures from the exhibition and everything. And it was like something was going on between my background drawing and using the hand and being able to make things. And I was making these little stage study things for this project, which then became a book, which is this somewhere. And later, much later, when I came to the Eames office, when I discovered the work of Charles and Ray Eames, it was like, it was like thunder. I mean, there was such a compatibility between the aesthetic that I had unconsciously been using and the disciplined playfulness of what the Eameses were doing. So how I got to California was that I was in Chicago at the Institute of Design. The Eameses came to the school to speak. We were hanging from the rafters. I mean, it was like, ah, oh, you know, the gates of heaven had, hold, had opened up and we all went in it. And I mean, Charles showed us these things, which were, now we all know them. But nobody uh, looked at kites that way before. I mean, nobody looked at bread that way before. Uh, nobody, you know, the ordinary things of the world were suddenly extraordinary. And um, plus, of course, the work they were doing. And I'd known about them also because I think that there was a Life magazine issue, the house that Eames built. And I looked at Charles and Ray and the toys that they were doing, and I felt like, oh, it was sort of like part of me, or part of me wanted to be part of that. So fortunately, Charles and Ray decided they needed some uh, intern to come and help in the summer. I think it was 53. Well, I was very happy. I would also get scared. I mean, I was only 22, and you know, in those years, there were very few designers. And of all designers in the world, I was with the best, and not only the best, but as people and as compatible people. The famous story I have about, about assignments is that Charles could always psych out what your Achilles heel was, and then he made you do that. In my case, uh, one of my first assignments, if not my first, was to work on the instruction sheet for the House of Cards which meant drawing 
the cards in perspective configurations that they could take and you know how, where the hand goes and all that. Well, that kind of drawing was done by a ruling pen, the world's cruelest tool. Now, I could draw anything if I looked at it, you know, with pencil or croco or something. But the ruling pen was not my friend. And that's what I had to do. I had to draw those cards exactly right and in the right perspective with a ruling pen. In doing designing the instruction sheet for the House of Cards, it had to be very thin and very little because it was just a very small package. And, oh, I discovered Bible paper. I went downtown and, and looked at all these different kinds of paper and decided Bible paper. And then I started folding it up in various ways because I'd done a lot of folding at school and I loved paper and I loved paper folding and I thought, you know, the toy, I mean, the house of cards and the toys, the whole thing is playful, so I would make this really wonderful unfolding thing. And then Charles came and looked at it and he said, I can't even imagine a machine that would fold that. So I made an accordion fold, which it still is, and it has those drawings on it. But the thing is, he appreciated that I had done that. He appreciated going beyond the line or having ideas that meant something. And I think another thing, which I've said many times, but I will say it here again, is Charles's belief that you could learn more about a community by, from its bread and soup than from its museums and concert halls. And that, had le that has influenced a great deal of what I do, what I have done, what Sussman Preja does, what we're even being asked to do. So they began to ask me to do catalogs, and it was just at the time when I, I still was doing some things at Eames, but not all the time. I was sort of sprouting wings a little bit. And then architects began to call on me, and I realized that, you know, that one day I didn't fill out my timesheet at Eames anymore, <laughs> even though we re remained close to them until the very, very end. Six More Catalog has a little bit of, it's playful, but has a little minimalist, you know, it's sharp, it's sharp. And when I looked at the work uh, just now, the work in that catalog is not so sharp. But it must have been also what was going on in graphics, which this minute I don't exactly remember. But I was very excited by uh, treating letter forms in a non-traditional way. By today's standards, it looks kind of traditional because it's symmetrical, uh, but it was taking it one step further. And the type becomes the message. And you look at it and you know what it's about. I think it was something like that. And also fluorescent ink. Oh my god. We didn't used to have fluorescent ink to play with. And you, so you can get fluorescent paper and print with fluorescent inks. I mean, talk about a brave new world. <laughs> I mean, this is in the 60s, of course. It was very early on in the 50s when I came to stay with the Eameses. And they invited me to stay in the house. Now, what was I going to leave as a gift for two people who had all the best of everything that they ever wanted in the whole world? Everybody smoked then. Ray smoked parliaments. That's what's in here. So my gift to them, which took a long time to make, was to open up every, uh, every package in a carton of parliament, open them up, and paint a design on each cigarette with aniline dye and a brush. I had something like five sets of colors and five designs, which I mixed all up. And then after I had painted this entire carton of cigarettes, I put them all back in the boxes, put the cellophane back sealed on the boxes, and put the boxes in the carton. So that when they came home from Europe, Ray just screamed. Then Ray told me sometimes they had house guests who'd steal them. In the Eames years, Charles could call up Thomas Watson, the head of IBM, and talk, and vice versa. The Dupree family, who were Herman Miller, were like family to us. 
they would come and Ray would make those wonderful lunches and we'd all, you know, sit and enjoy them and our pictures would be taken and we could talk to them as equals. And uh, the, the profession of marketing was in its infancy. So we didn't even have market pe marketing people in those earlier years. Later on, there were a few, just a few. Hey, Hillary, would you like to take a look at that issue? It truly is a different world. Um, first of all, the mantra now is think small, think smart, or work small, work smart. That's a huge difference because at the Eames office, the building that we were in was probably approximately the size of the one we're in now, but we didn't have all the machines. And in the back there was a shop, a full-fledged shop. Things took a lot longer to do, and Charles liked to say, we have the luxury to waste time, meaning you did it until it was right. Mm -hmm. 